Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I am Kate Lansha and today I'm continuing on the path down where I'm looking into better solutions for our environmental catastrophe that is looming over the planet. And what I'd like to look in today is the 60 year old technology which was developed in the late 1950s known by the name as molten salt reactors. Now these things are super interesting reactors. For one, unlike normal traditional light water reactors, the pressure within the system is atmospheric pressure. Whereas a light water system can run anywhere from 75 to 150 atmospheres. So if there's any issue in such an event, then you have a Chernobyl. The top of the reactor normally blows off and this is as a result of the hydrogen actually splitting from the oxygen within the water due to the extreme reactions that are occurring within the fuel rods or within the fuel cell or the actual reactor vessel. This is where molten salts are very much safer in that regard because Molten salts, they do have a, also a critical density which they reach um, where the reaction would continue and would run away. However, a molten salt reactor, because it's running at atmospheric pressure, one can put plugs in it at the bottom of the actual reactor vessel which will melt once the temperature exceeds the maximum temperature you want to achieve within the uh, reactor. So for instance, molten salts, they start melting normally around 800 degrees Celsius and they would stay liquid all the way up until about 1400 degrees on average. Some has a much higher boiling point, but 1400 is most salts that we normally use within these reactors. So one can use plugs in the bottom of the reactor vessel that is made of copper as copper's melting point is just above 1000 degrees Celsius. So in the event that your reactor exceeds, let's say 1000 degrees Celsius, then the plug would melt out and you'd have smaller containers underneath the reactor vessel which the fluid or the salts can be drained within and thus completely stopping the reaction as the critical mass is not enough within the smaller containers to continue the reaction. There is though a few drawbacks of the molten salt reactor, like for instance the problem with the pumps, because you are having all of your nuclear active material within your salts, as you are pumping it around and having the working fluid do its work, you also have a very radioactive line that everything is running through so your pumps are exposed to radiation and your reservoirs everything is exposed to radiations within your system which is a bit of a problem for maintenance as you can imagine the other problem obviously also is is that some of the salts they start breaking down if for instance the radioactive byproducts actually interact with the salts Though this is something that is solvable and we have solved it with a couple of prototypes so it's not an insurmountable problem. The other massive advantage in regards with the salt reactors are, is that they can be used as a breeder. So one can use old nuclear waste and breed that old nuclear waste into an element or elements that are less radioactive and for a shorter period of time radioactive and thus making it possible that we could resolve the nuclear waste problem that is currently going on in the world and then the major concern of that has been resolved and as previously stated you will not be able to get an explosion in terms of what a light water reactor would do because you are running at atmospheric pressure so you already have two major safety advantages over the normal light water reactors. So as a result, these would be the best, in my opinion, the best possible option that we could use in order to resolve a lot of climate problems. Because with solar panels, we have 
No matter how many solar panels you have, the problem is they don't work at night. Whereas a molten salt reactor, it can function not only as a, as a fission reactor, it can also function as a battery. Which is quite interesting because if you actually have electrical heaters within your salts, you can then, if you have a big enough reservoir of salts, then you can store solar energy within that salt reservoir. So you'd actually end up using less nuclear material in order to sustain a carbon-free grid. So all of these advantages, in my opinion, is great for the environment in every single sense. But now I'm sure, just like how I had a question as to why this technology has been forgotten to the history books and why we are not using these. Well, that's actually quite an interesting story. You see, the thing is, the United States, they developed this reactor in the late 1950s in order to see if they can find a more efficient way of making weapons grade material. However, the breeder reactor isn't great for that. Yes, it has, you can make weapons grade material from a breeder reactor, but it is exceptionally difficult. Exceptionally difficult in comparison to what we are currently using, because nowadays we use light water reactors in order to create the radioactive materials that is required for weaponry. However, as previously stated and as been made abundantly obvious by the world with the massive problem with all the nuclear waste, it has that side effect. Massive amounts of nuclear waste that will last for thousands and thousands of years. Whereas, if we just start utilizing breeder reactors, we will be able to breed that materials into a much safer form and then we don't have to worry about making safe havens for radioactive material. And these protests can stop. Now I'm bringing this up for a very important reason. Hear me out. Now imagine for another civilization that comes after us. What could we possibly leave on there to make them understand that nuclear waste is dangerous? Symbols that for us indicate danger can mean a multitude of things. I mean, it's ridiculous if you look at the skull and bone warning, for instance. If you don't have a context of that being the skeleton of a being, you might ask yourself, what type of being looks like that? What type of weird alien creature has a skull and two bones? In fact, you might not even think it's a skull, because the skull design of your civilization might be completely different. You might not even have eyes, so imagine if a species doesn't have eyes, how would it be able to know that this deposits here are a dangerous thing? And the answer is, is, is that there's just nothing that we can ever do to really make a nuclear deposit safe. There is just nothing that we can do in that regard. However, we can clean up after ourselves with molten salt reactors. So as a result, I do hope that we start using this. Um, I see that India, they are currently the forerunners in regards of breeder reactors. And the reason being is, is that they have a lot of thorium and very little uranium deposits. And thorium on its own is not really a great nuclear fuel, but within a breeder reactor, one can use thorium in order to run the breeder reactor. And you can then breed better material, better isotopes from better elements in order to advance the power production of said reactor from thorium for instance but then obviously the one most important thing for me is the fact that you'd be able to solve the nuclear waste problem on our planet and for me that's a win all round so i hope you enjoyed this video or at least took something from it and if you managed to watch my boring video this far, then you surely have to subscribe and share it with a friend if you have any. And I hope to see you on my next video.